I listened to him, I watched him, and the integrity has never left. He is a man of integrity. What Sandy tell you he gonna do, he gonna do that. And we need dynamic leadership in place now. We've got to take advantage of this. Sandy is a businessman, a person that's been doing this his whole life, not a career politician. So he will be able to address the needs of the city. And I hear the excitement that I feel that uh, Sandra Sampson is going to make a great difference in the community. We don't have leadership, honestly. Leadership is absent. I just believe that we need a change, and I believe that Sandy Simpson is the one to do that for us. You want to support someone that's going to make people inclusive. Here I am sitting there, and he's going to make women inclusive, black, because that's who I represent. So I feel comfortable supporting him 100%. He fits the bill like no one else. He has such fabulous contacts throughout the world. He has taken Mobile to the world already. And now the world is coming to Mobile. This man's sincere. Just look at him. Look in his eyes. You can feel in his heart. He's sincere about this job. He cares about the community. He cares about Mobile. And he wants to take us to the next level. And that is what Sandy Stimson is going to do. He's going to take Mobile higher. Mobile, Alabama is blessed with the greatest people in the South. 300 years of rich history and an international business hub connected by sea to global markets. We are a regional center for medicine, education, industry, and an unrivaled natural beauty. All of this contributes to our unique sense of place. Over the past few months, Sandy Stimson has been traveling around the city, listening to you. What he learned is that you are neither comfortable nor satisfied with things as they are. For some time now, we seem to be stuck in place. Unable to leverage these advantages so Mobile can take its place among the greatest cities of the South. We know we can do better, but we will only do better by all coming together. This election will be a defining moment, a chance for us to meet the demands of these challenging times and keep faith with the citizens of our city. Mobile needs strong leadership with a real vision. Someone who can bring people together and isn't afraid to be held accountable. That leader is Sandy Stimson. Having spent almost my entire life growing up in Mobile, I can tell you that I consider a privilege and a blessing to have grown up in a city that I love. I've been blessed with a wonderful family and a long career in the lumber manufacturing business. And the older I get, the more I realize the importance of giving back to the community. No, I never thought I'd run for political office. But in the next few minutes, with the help of my family and friends, we'll tell you my story. But it boils down to this. You know, God instilled in me an intense passion for helping others. And my parents didn't raise me to be a bench warmer. So truthfully, I just could not sit on the sidelines any longer and hope that things would get better in our community. Together with you, we can bring our community together as one mobile, and we will achieve things that others have only dreamed about. The Stimson family roots can be traced back to rural Marengo and Clark counties in South Alabama. His parents, Billy and Margaret, grew up in Mobile, got married, and moved to Apalachicola, Florida, where Billy ran a logging operation and a sawmill. They moved back to Mobile in 1952, the year Sandy was born. Their first home was on South Monterey in Midtown. This is where Sandy began learning the values that would guide his life. Sandy's brothers, Fred and Richard, and his sister Pam were fortunate that their parents, through love, discipline, and example, instilled in them core values that have guided them throughout their lives. Being part of a large extended family also taught Sandy how to get along and cooperate with others. I'm the oldest, and I have three brothers. Sandy's my second brother. and. Um, it just was a lot of fun growing up in a house with one girl, three boys. Daddy would always have us have these little boxing matches when we were little, and he would have Fred and Sandy put on the boxing gloves, and, and it was kind of a, a family full of fun, but also fun competition. And uh, I have to say, Sandy was kind of the cream of the crop. He seemed to respect people, and he was always a brother. That, that we all honored because he always kind of chose the right thing, right path, 
and he honored the right people. Sandy was a leader from uh, uh, middle school. He really started blossoming. Uh, he in high school he became uh, he was on the honor council. He was. Uh, always leading, whether it was socially or academically at the school, on the football team. I mean, he was the kind of guy that didn't complain, came in, got the job done. He makes people better because he's there. Sour milling ran in the family. So Sandy's father and his father's brothers followed in their father's footsteps. Eventually, the opportunity to own their own sawmill presented itself and they purchased Gulf Lumber Company. Lumber business is not always stable. So you gotta have people in leadership that knows how to keep the company going, keep every employee with a paycheck going home to take care of his or her family. Santa has those qualifications. Now, in the lumber industry and in the business like that, sometimes lumber sales, is, guess what, you can't sell nothing. So when that happens, he knows how to manage that. The city government, they're not selling lumber down there, but some of the things are similar. And he'll be a great man for that. He's got the experience. He won't be going in there trying to learn how to do it. He already knows how to do it. Out of the 41 years that I've known him, He's always got that open ear to listen at what you got to say or whatever your concerns are. And for that, you know, I can't help but to say I'm my man for that because everybody don't have it. Sandy was a natural leader who easily made friends and inspired others. I was Sandy's coach uh, starting in the eighth grade and, and Sandy was, um, was a lot of fun to coach. And whatever he accomplished, he accomplished through hard work and uh, very much was a leader. Uh, all the other kids looked up to him, uh, and he was the type of uh, kid that uh, coaches really loved to coach because uh, he had that inner desire to, to, to work hard and uh, do whatever it took to succeed. In 1975, Sandy graduated from the University of Alabama and returned to Mobile to go to work at the sawmill. Later that year, he married his college girlfriend, Jean. Over the past 37 years, Sandy and Jean have been blessed with four wonderful children, Billy, Virginia, Sands, and Nancy, who in turn have blessed them with eight precious grandchildren. Well, I've known Sandy pretty much all my life, but I didn't really know Sandy until I taught his children. And I've had them both in the classroom and as a counselor, and I've been at the same school you know, since I graduated from college. And one thing I can say about his children, they are so much like he and Jean are. They're just respectful and kind and open and honest. And they were very kind to other people around them. Like when the students were having, somebody was having a bad time, they were the ones who would kind of jump in on the slide and make sure they were included. In going to work at the sawmill, Sandy joined his brother Fred and was later joined by his cousins Mitch Shackelford and Ben Stimson. From their early teenage years, it had been made clear to all of them that nothing was going to be handed to them, that they were going to have to work hard and gain the respect of their co-workers if they were going to advance in the company. Having ridden the up and down cycles of the housing market, by the mid-1990s, they had proven themselves by learning every aspect of the lumber business. It was tough during the down cycles, but together, they made it work, and the business grew. In 2009, they merged Gulf Lumber Company with Scotch Lumber to form Scotch and Gulf Lumber. Sandy learned that the best ideas for improvement often came from co-workers, and the best strategies and the sweetest success came from drawing on one another's expertise and building consensus for a path forward. Sandy applies those lessons to everything he does. Over the last 20 years, he has been selected to head both local and statewide organizations focusing on education and business development. In 2007, he was tapped to co-chair an effort to raise $10 million, which helped fund the recruitment of Airbus and other industries. Airbus is a huge economic engine that's fixing to be in our community. 
And, and, and the reality is it's going to create significant opportunity, but we've got to take advantage of that opportunity. We can't just sit back and act like, well, now that we've got Airbus, you know, we're in great shape. No, that's not the case at all. We've got to take all those suppliers and people that would be impacted by this new industry and, 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 and attract them to our community to make them feel like they want to be a part of Mobile. Mobile is a wonderful place, and, and, and it's, just, it's just no question in my mind that this threshold that we're on the, on the cusp of is, is going to be something that we've never seen before, and we need dynamic leadership in place now. We've got to take advantage of this, and we will no longer be the city of perpetual opportunity. Mobile has always been a city that's, you know, had several opportunities and never really able, been able to capitalize on them. And right now, we have one shot at the biggest opportunity to completely transform our city. And that's going to start at the top with the leadership. And Sandy is a businessman, a person that's been doing this his whole life, not a career politician. So he will be able to address the needs of the city as we grow with Airbus and the opportunities that come along with it. Sandy has been involved in a number of civic endeavors, but in 2006, he met a very special group of children who would alter the course of his life. Even though I had the spark, I had the dream, I needed resources. There was one man that stepped forward. His name was Sandy Stimpson, and he really took this on as a mission. And I can say, I believe he wore this like he wore his clothes. I believe he went to bed with Pritchard Prep on his mind. I believe he got up thinking about Pritchard Prep. It hasn't been easy. Suddenly it came at a bad time. Money wasn't flowing. No tuitions being paid. But he never flinched. He is a man of means. He is a man of integrity. What Sandy tell you he gonna do, he gonna do that. From the instant Sandy met these children, they changed his life. And from that point forward, the Lord put it in his heart to get involved with a struggling inner city school in Pritchard. Working with these children, teachers, parents, and the community taught Sandy the value of leading by listening, by him through collaboration and accountability. That's the way bold visions are transformed into reality. He truly is a person who um, understands the future. And he doesn't, when he looks at those kids, he doesn't see those kids as little kids. He looks at those kids and he sees a congressman, and he sees a banker, and he sees a lawyer, and he sees all the different aspects of what they could be. I feel that I do not have to defend Sandy's character. I know him as a man. I know him as a businessman. I know him to be a good husband, a good father, and just a good Christian all around. And he doesn't need a defense. All he needs to do is to keep doing the good that he's doing. People will talk no matter what. You just have to let them talk and work for the better good of this city. Because when you're progressing, people are gonna throw dirt. But what you have to do, just shake it off pack it under your feet and go a little higher. And that is what Sandy Stimson is going to do. He's going to take Mobile higher. Sandy Stimson has a history of bringing people together, building consensus, and solving problems through hard work and collaboration. Sandy has done it for more than 30 years in the private sector as a business owner, and he's done it through numerous projects to help build a better Mobile. Today, Mobile needs a mayor that knows how to create small business jobs, who will focus on improving Mobile's quality of life and work tirelessly until the city's streets are safe. As a mom, I'm concerned about the safety of my children, and I'm concerned about the safety of my city. Um, I do believe it's a great place to live. I chose to live here. Um, I want it to be that place for them. I want them to have the memories that, you know, I had growing up, you know. I, I just believe that we need a change, and I believe that Sandy Stimson is the one to do that for us. I feel 
that Sandy could give access and and unify because I look at, at my life and I look at how he dealt with me as a small business growing up and uh, trying to grow in this community. He took time out to listen to me, to hear whatever problems I have, to come and sit with me and say, let me look at this, let me look at this for you. Never charge anything but just serve me. And he didn't have to do it. I mean, to, to, to be running the co uh, companies that he run, to, to be a part of all the boards that he's a part of, but for him to stop when Monique called to say, hey, can you come and look at this for me? For him to do that and to stop, and I mean, you're not talking about he's stopping for a family member. He's stopping for an African-American woman that he met some years ago, but he's concerned about my business in this community. Then why would he not be concerned about everybody else in the community and, and want to bring them to make them to be a part of this community. And that's what he's done for me. I've listened to him, I watched him, and 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 the integrity has never left. And so you want to support someone that's gonna make people inclusive. Here I am sitting there, if he's gonna make women inclusive, black, because that's who I represent. So I feel comfortable supporting him hundred percent. There is reason to be hopeful. At a time, at this time we need a new style of leadership. We need a mayor who can unify our city. I need your support and your vote as we work together to achieve the greatness that can come out of one mobile. If you will join me in creating one mobile, then we will become known as the city where everyone wants to live, work, play, and pray. And when we get there, we'll give God the glory. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. As a businessman, I think he will understand and they will bring people together and sit down on the table and look for the better of the city to have more people, more ethnicity, so we can have more business and more, we generate more revenue for the city. Everybody be happy. See people come from this part of Mobile and see people come from that part of Mobile, West Mobile, Birdsville and all the different places just to come together. That, that's a, that's a, that is a blessing. That's a sign of change. It's something that's new is taking place. And I believe that uh, things is getting to start off in, in a new direction. Sandy is the talk of the town. And everywhere you go and everywhere you turn, people are talking about Sandy being our next mayor. And it's, it's the time for it. And as I said, we are an international city. And he personifies what an ambassador is all about, as well as a mayor. So the time is right. Thankfully, the man in the hour and the city have met. No doubt in my mind, he's the right person for the job here. And like, I, I love what he said the other day when he was speaking. He said that, I'm not looking for a job. I'm here just to make sure the job get done. You know, and I mean, that right there resonated with me big time. And uh, he is the man for the job. Mobile is based like it's, it's the standstill position. And we need to move forward. And like he said, we're not here to bump heads, we're here to move ahead. And we need to take Mobile forward now. And for the last, I would say, six years, it's just been like, just stays barely moving, barely moving now. And, and like I said, he's the right man for the job. He, he cares about Mobile. You can just talk to him, I tell anybody, because I, like I said, eight months ago, I didn't have a chance, but you, know, you talk to him, you talk to him five minutes, 10 minutes, and just, this man's sincere. Just look at him, look in his eyes, you feel in his heart. He's sincere about this job. He cares about the community, he cares about Mobile, and he wanted to take us to the next level. All of my life, I've been part of groups and teams who wanted to make a profound difference. I've always been relentless in finding solutions to challenges. Telling me it can't be done only causes me to find a way to get it done. Seeing the potential and then bringing people together for the common purpose causes the impossible to be possible. Just imagine with me, if you can, what the future holds for our children and our grandchildren if we all come together and create one mobile. We must do a better job of fighting crime by tying together prevention, enforcement, and rehabilitation. And we must build a stronger economy that stimulates job growth in the small businesses. And when it comes to your tax dollars, you deserve to know where every single penny is spent. And when it comes to doing business at City Hall, it must be made easier. 
After all, you're paying the bills. And we must have a mayor who's both engaged and committed to improving public education. By tying all of these together, we improve your quality of life and we improve Mobile. Stand with me and on August 27th, the mission begins. God bless you and God bless Mobile. I know that we have got to improve downtown and we've got we've had plans on the shelf you know they've got to be implemented uh, there's no great city that does not have a great downtown it's got to be walkable livable sh shoppable all those things have got to happen I can assure you uh, that I will work with the downtown uh, merchants and the downtown citizens you know to make sure that we do it in the right way yes we will recruit anybody that wants to come to Mobile uh, but at the same time, we've got to reach out to the current moms and pops and make them feel welcomed also. Currently, our city is not known as being business friendly, and we've got to change that. We have got to be able to run the city in such a way that the, the employees and the management want to live within the city. You know, And to do that, the city's got to be more business friendly. You know, I think that right now that we've got to get into the office and then out to determine really uh, where all the money is going. You can't determine that from the information being put out by City Hall right now. But once we get a grip on that, then I think that we can, uh, you know, come back to the citizens and tell them, you know, how we're going to reallocate uh, money that's uh, coming into the city. The problems in our city are nonpartisan. It's going to take nonpartisan a nonpartisan effort to solve them. My focus is on issues that are, affect our city. There's so many national issues and statewide issues that have nothing to do with it. And so if we bring everybody together in the nonpartisan way, uh, we will be able to solve the city's problems. And that's going to be my focus. Will, regarding the soccer fields, I'm with you. Why don't we have them? I don't understand it. Uh, there have been plans on the shelf for years. We've had ample opportunity to implement them, but it just hasn't been done. You know, our young people have to leave Mobile to go play in soccer tournaments. That's crazy. Uh, so I'm hopeful that when I become mayor, that we'll change that. Uh, because not only does it give our, our children an opportunity to be involved in recreational things that improve the quality of life, but it also can be a moneymaker for other people coming to Mobile to play in soccer tournaments. It just needs to be done. But what you see in my right hand is a coin that was struck in the 1950s, and it's the only coin ever been in the United States that has the profile of two people on it. And one of them is George Washington Carver, the other is Booker T. Washington. I carry it uh, just as a reminder uh, of the children at Pritchard Preparatory School that maybe one, of, one day that one of them can be with George Washington Carver. And really, it's not just Pritchard Preparatory School. You know, it's all of our schools. But uh, George Washington Carver could be an inspiration to anyone and should be an inspiration to anyone that knows anything about his life. It's ridiculous that we're losing our policemen to become security guards at universities to other small cities that pay more than we do. We've got to figure out a way to uh, compensate them properly. So that's something we'll be working on. I just know that there are other cities that have gone in and they have streamlined their processes in all aspects of government interfacing uh, with their citizens. You know, our perfect example in the Mobile is what Kim Hastie's done in the license uh, tag uh, department. So, you know, uh, what she did was she took the same people, you know, that were struggling to give us a tag, you know, in a couple hours at times, you know, and now we're getting a tag in almost 10 minutes. And I really think that's what we should do in every department of government, and we'll work to do that. Yesterday, at the year-end ceremonies at Pritchard Preparatory School, the students gave me this quilt. If you look closely, you'll see that each square has been signed and made by each individual student, and then they had it sewn into the quilt. This is really one of the most thoughtful gifts that I've ever received. So thank you to all the students at Pritchard Preparatory School. By selecting 10 friends that you know will vote, following up with them to assure they do, 
Uh, that's one of the things that you can do to help us the most right now, other than just everybody you see, you just tell them they have got to vote for Sandy Stimson. And uh, if you do those things, we will win this election. The success of a city rises and falls with the leadership ability of its mayor. A true leader casts a vision that creates improvement for everyone. A true leader unites and he does not divide. And a true leader accepts responsibility and doesn't blame others or circumstances. After you elect me mayor, and if there are problems in the city, I am responsible. If there are problems in the parks or the permitting system, I am responsible. If we have an empty cruise terminal, I'm responsible. If the city council, if the city, if the city council and the mayor are not working together as a team, I am responsible. And if a New York uh, reporter writes that we're the third most miserable city, I am responsible. And if the high school graduation rate is less than 80%, I am responsible. And if the crime statistics are being falsely reported, I am responsible. I am not new to accepting responsibility. I have done it all of my life. I've been solving problems all of my life, and I'm not new at casting bold visions all of my adult life. I've done it in business, I've done it in civic organizations, and I've done it at schools. Looking back over the last eight years, I ask you, is your neighborhood safer? Do you feel safer? Is the quality of life improved in our city or in your neighborhood? And do you really think that City Hall is operating at optimum efficiency? If not, then we are not ready to take advantage of the opportunities that will come with Airbus. And today, I stand ready to lead Mobile from being good to great, to become the safest, most business and family friendly city in America by the year 2020. If we embrace this vision, then we put a stop to Mobile becoming a city in decline. Just imagine how many lives we will save while we're doing this, how many violent crimes that we were prevented by doing it, and how many jobs that we can create through small business growth. Imagine our city where young people don't leave and where the young people from other communities come here to live because of our quality of life and our jobs. Imagine a city, imagine our city being a place where we can live, work, and play and pray together as one mobile. We all want beautiful parks. We all want a vibrant and growing arts community. We want roadways with bike paths. And we want to make sure that our infrastructure is not crumbling. So over the next six weeks, I'm going to earn your vote. And I would just ask for you to vote for me on August 27th. And in doing so, you will have voted for the person with the most passion and the most commitment that will unite our city so that all Mobilians feel a part of this community.